right, I know we're uh, looking for the world's largest crocodile, but I have about a four-foot croc right now in my arms. The difference between a croc and an alligator is that the nose is more pointed. This, my friends, is a death adder. She's very milky eyes, and that's an indication that she's about to slough her skin. This motor scooter's heavy, but you know it's gonna get me through the water at about six miles an hour, and that's important because that's gonna allow me to save on oxygen. You can see these stalactites hanging down, and this is really from years and years of water dripping through this very porous limestone. This is going to be a, a problem if I can't get through here. I certainly don't want to be stupid where I squeeze myself in there and I can't squeeze myself back. We're at about 16,000 feet. Fog's starting to clear off. The sun, you can see, is starting to rise. This is a forward scattering spectrometer. Now, I know that's a very fancy word. We're just going to call it a cloud probe. Generally, this is mounted on an airplane, but because of our unique position here on Storm Peak, it can actually collect data from clouds right here in place, and it's one of the many instruments we use here to solve the incredibly difficult puzzle of our climate. All right, check this out. We have a carpet snake up in this tree. Let's see if I can get him out. Got him by the head. Okay. This is a carpet snake. The reason this guy was up in a tree is because he feeds on birds and opossums. Now, it looks like he's smiling at me. He's certainly not. He's got heat sensors in there. And he uses those, especially at night, to slither up and catch his prey. The peregrine falcon is the fastest animal that there is. It can actually dive at over 200 miles an hour. And you can see little holes at the edge of its beak. And that's actually how it gets air when it's diving at those incredible speeds. Each creature within this ecosystem has an integral role. And when a non-native animal is introduced, it can literally wreak havoc. See this little perfect cylindrical tube here? This is the home of the dune wolf spider. And the dune wolf spider has these glowy little eyes. It digs a burrow down there. It wraps its web around it so the sand doesn't collapse. And then it sits there and waits for other insects. They don't get big and old by being stupid. Wow, look at the size of that. You know, before this, uh, Teddy and I did agree that his location would stay secret, not only from you, but from me as well. So uh, I'm gonna do probably the most humbling and humiliating thing an explorer can do. Put your head in the bag. And you, as a, you know what, yeah. as a lifelong New York Jets fan, I know what this feels like. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>